Yes. Okay, so welcome to the Church of Jesus Christ. We're going to get started. Uh, way too much of an introduction. I'm not going to share with you the um, theme just yet. We'll get to the theme, but I'm going to give you a little hint. I found two little words in the Word of God. I, I know I've read past them over and over and over, but when I read them, I was so taken by the phrase that they created. And so that's the hint of our, our theme this morning. Uh, those of you who are Tuesday nighters with us, you know this. When you go back with an assignment to read a book, uh, we have our summer uh, book club that we're doing on Tuesday nights. And what that entails is we're reading books from the scripture. And so as an example, this is Romans. Um, and so with, with this reading, um, we're we're finding gems in books we've already read. And so I'm telling you, I found this two word gem that will will function as our, our theme. Enough of, of the temptation. I'm going to get to it uh, as a small child. Um, my fr and this is not about me, but it's my experience. And so uh, I want to I want to share with you some of that experience to help uh, draw out our, our theme. As a small child, my friends and I played every day, just like you did, um, small child, uh, played every day, uh, every sport imaginable from the time we got outside to the time our parents called us back home. And just nonstop games, 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 probably mostly wiffle ball or baseball, but every game possible. We just played tag, everything. Uh, during those same years, uh, my family, at the end of the day, my family played a lot of board games, a lot of card games, uh, so that the evenings were spent playing again. And it was my my youth was spent in, in playful times nonstop um, in school. We did very similar. We played yard games. We played uh, playground games. And again, from the minute we got out for, for recess to the time that they brought us back in. And then after school, those who hung around the schoolyard played more. Games galore. Um, when I got to junior high school, I, I played sports. I played a lot of different things. But what I remember significantly is before we went to class, every single day, we played stickball. Now, in, in <clears throat> South Florida, there was um, beautiful diversity in, in, amongst uh, the, the students in, in West Palm Beach. And so it would often get separated by um, friends or, or um, different uh, families. It was incredible. And you would get, we call them downs. I don't know if anyone knows that, but you'd get downs on the, on the game and we got the next game. My group of guys would have the next game and we'd play against the winner of the game before. Just it, 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 it got us to school early. You know, prior to that, we all showed up just as the bell rang. All of a sudden we were going to play before school. Everyone found it, their way to school by seven o'clock in the morning. We'd play for an hour of, of stickball. Um, during those same years, uh, my friends and um, invited me to something. I had never even played this game before. I was not a Boy Scout. I was not a Cub Scout, so I didn't know this game at all. And I remember, um, again, I'm going to take you to West Palm Beach. We all, the, the city of West Palm Beach was separated from um, the, the island of Palm Beach by an intracoastal waterway which, you know, if you look it up in Wikipedia, it'll probably tell you it's a canal or a river. Way bigger than that. A huge, huge, huge uh, a water span between the two. So the first block in West Palm Beach um, were people of substance. I'll say it that way. We did not live on that first block. Trust me when I tell you, far from it. So my friends invited me down to play this game. And that first block was the longest block from from east to west, the longest block in West Palm Beach was that first block off the water. So it was probably about a half a mile. We played capture the flag behind the homes of these streets, and each game would last the entire day. Seven, eight hours playing capture the flag. It was fabulous. It just incredible. Um, in high school, I went on to play a lot more organized sports. Um, 
But during high school, we found a park. Candace and I, actually our first apartment was right across the street from the park we played at. We found a park that if you jiggled the lock on the lights, you could get this door open and turn the lights on. Like if you waited till about midnight, you could turn the lights on. We played basketball all night. Friday nights, we'd play all night. Literally, we'd go from from midnight to about four in the morning. Then we'd all head to Waffle House and have breakfast. Then we'd get home in our homes by five or five thirty. I don't know that my parents ever knew I was doing this. I, I they never asked me about it. I think I snuck in successfully week after week after week. Um, wasn't doing bad things that we were just out playing basketball all night. Um, in college, I was a physical education major when I first started my degree, and so I probably learned every game. And for my for my college credits, I played. I played games for my for my college credits, so I learned and played these games. So I'm, I hope you're hearing throughout my life as a young person, game after game after game. I could go on. I mean, I, I continued to play well into, to really, I played softball up until a year or two back. So I've played my whole life. I coach now. I think most of you know I coach high school football. Uh, I've been coaching for 30 years, different sports. All of this, all of this introduction to tell you that every one of these games whether playing on a on a court, playing racquetball. Uh, in uh, by the way, in college we played racquetball all night. Once we gave up basketball, we a friend of mine worked at a racquetball court, and he always asked for the fr late Friday shift. And then we'd come sneaking in after midnight, and we'd play racquetball, uh, which was a very expensive sport unless you had a buddy who worked at racquetball and opened the door for you. We'd play all night there as well. And again, Waffle House was our landing spot. All of these sports had the same thing in common card games, board games, court sports, field sports, organized sports, all of these, one purpose, you play to win. That's it. You play to win. I'm not a blood letter, so I didn't fight to, to the core to win. I, I am today probably in, in our family. Um, there's two of us who really don't play with a whole lot of competitive spirit at all. I'm probably played enough in my life where I just don't have that anymore. But you still play to win. No matter what it is that you're playing, you play to win. And, and maybe some of you might think to yourself, well, maybe not. And I don't know how you define win. Win has a lot of different ways to be defined. I often tell my my um, football team, my young the young people that I coach, uh, my phrase to them, and I think any one of them would tell you this is what I tell them. I hope I teach you a little football. I hope I teach you a lot of life. And so uh, I, I don't have that drive any longer to, to make certain that winning is everything because I believe win can be defined a lot of ways, but you play to win want you to understand that because it's key to our, our theme today. So it, it, regardless of how one defines winning, we still have the same goal, whether it's a game of Uno, whether it's a game of racquetball, whether it's a game of football, we play for the, the joy of that victory. I'm going to show you the importance of, of um, winning, even if you um, maybe find yourself saying, ah, I'm not sure that that's so important. Here are a couple major league baseball players currently playing baseball, currently making millions of dollars. Jake Cronenworth. Have no idea who he is. Cal Raleigh. Have no idea who he is. Christian Walker. Don't know. And Ian Happ. Don't know. But if I said Babe Ruth, Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle, Barry Bonds, you know them all. They're winners. You know them because they're winners. And they haven't played for years. NFL, Matthew Slater currently is on someone's roster today. Who is he? Don't know. Scott Matlock. Sorry, Scott. Don't know who you are. Dante Stills. Anyone related? Anyone have his uh, trading card? Don't know who he is. Dante Stills and Joe Tipman. 
Don't know who Joe Tipman is. But if I said Tom Brady, Jerry Rice, Walter Payton, Peyton Manning, oh, we'd come alive and tell stories about all these guys. Don't know them, but we know who they are. Winners. NBA, Barney Cable. Barney Cable is on a roster somewhere on the 32 teams of basketball. I don't know who Barney Cable is. Doug Sims, Corleone Young, Ozell Jones. I don't know these human beings. And they're, and they're successful. All these names that we don't know are probably the best athlete ever to come out of their hometown, ever to come out of their high school, maybe ever to come out of their college. And we don't even know them. But we know Michael Jordan. We know LeBron James. We know Kobe Bryant. I can even give you two names that I don't have to give you last names. We all know who Magic is. We all know who Shaq is. Winners. The difference between winners. So winning counts. Today, our theme is found in Philippians, the third chapter. <laughs> Your assignment, read Philippians, the third chapter. Because I'm not going to. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to utilize the third chapter solely as our scripture today. I'm going to start the second half of the eighth verse. To establish our purpose. Paul, it's Paul's purpose, but we can claim it as well. And here's what Paul says. That I may... And here comes your theme today. Win Christ. Your theme today is win Christ. We play to win. And there's no greater win than to win Christ. That I may win Christ. And listen what else he says. And be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, says Paul, for me. And so I'll repeat these as my words, though Paul the author, I'll adopt these words in this moment. That I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. What that means is we determine righteousness by actions. We determine righteousness by obedience to the law. We, we determine righteousness with the seeing of the eyes. So I'm going to read it to you again so that you can see where we get it wrong and how Paul corrects us. So we don't understand something. We should not and don't determine righteousness actually by the law, but that's what comes naturally. So let's read it again, that I may win Christ, be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. July 27th, 1976, I was baptized on that day, if you know what Willy Wonka is, or if you've ever seen Willy Wonka, on that day, I was presented with the golden ticket. This, use this at the entrance of the paradise of God. This is your ticket. I had done nothing but believed. I had done nothing but said I'm sorry for everything I did wrong, which was the definition of my life at that point. I had done nothing to deserve that golden ticket, but I received it. Now, it's mine to, to lose. I have to, for the rest of my life, whisper I love you to God by obedience, by showing him how much I love him, by returning his kindness in some way. I read the word of God that says he did smile down upon them. That someday, some way, he would smile down upon me. Not for me, for him, for his glory. I no longer have to chase the golden ticket. It's in my hand. I just have to possess it. I just have to exchange it at paradise's gate. Reading on. That I may, uh, let me just read that again. The righteousness which is of God by faith. So that we don't get confused thinking we have to earn anything. 
We have to show our thankfulness. We have to show our tenderness to God. We have to never, never, never stop working. Faith without works is dead. It's not to prove ourselves. It's to return thanks to God. I no longer am searching to find my way to paradise. I found it. I now work to help others find the paradise of God. He gave me my golden ticket. And I don't take that lightly. I cling to that golden ticket every day of my life. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying to you. We cling to that. Reading on in the 10th verse, that I listen to this beautiful statement that Paul makes, that I may know him. We're back to Jesus Christ, that I may win Christ. Win Christ is our theme today. And, and how is that defined? That I may know him. And I'm going to infuse that I may know each time in the next couple verses. It goes without saying it is the implied phrase. So I'm going to I'm going to be very, very uh, overt and use it. Starting again, that I may know him and that I may know the power of his resurrection. And that I may know the fellowship of his suffering. So that when he says to me, sacrifice, I know the fellowship of his suffering. I know I'll never suffer anywhere near like he did. I know that he suffered for me. So that is not a harsh request. So that I might know the fellowship of Jesus Christ's suffering being made conformable unto his death. Paul says it later, we die daily. That means we are conformable to the death of Jesus Christ. He literally died. We figuratively die. We allow our spirit to die. Those things that were so important to us prior to your own January 27th, 1976, whenever that was, those things that you counted critical, you now know they're dust in the wind. They're unimportant. What's important is to show that golden ticket to everybody you know. So that they would long for the same. Come and find this source for this golden ticket. Come with me. I'll show you where I got it. Reading on into 11. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Oh, this is poetry. This is so beautiful what I'm reading to you. This is so beautiful what Paul wrote. We are captured, captured by the Holy Spirit. We are captured by Jesus Christ, apprehended. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, those things that once were important to me. Those things that I once held as valuable, I count those, as he says, forgetting them. I no longer need those. I now have a different focus. Count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. God replaces whatever that was with something much more beautiful, that plain and precious fruit, the blessings of God. Her sister told me an experience this morning before you all came on that was glorious. That's what we reach for. We reach for what's much more valuable than anything we had before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Hear this. I press forward or toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. What makes us perfect? Jesus Christ, not us, not us. We do nothing. We do nothing to gain any of this. It's all because of him. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God, in Jesus Christ. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if, 
in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Told Sister Patty as we were texting this morning before the service about a glorious dream that my mother once had that that speaks to this verse. If in anything ye be otherwise minded, God will reveal even this unto you. Sister Patty shot me a, a beautiful verse that she had uh, searched for a couple weeks back. And as I read it, it immediately stirred this, this experience in my mind. I think I've told it before, but it's appropriate. It's God revealing himself to my mom. And so I'll reveal it to you. And in this experience, she was walking on this path. And there were beautiful flowers on the side, beautiful flowers. And as she began to walk, she thought, how beautiful that the path is, is, is covered, or has these beautiful flowers on the side to make this a pleasant walk. So she stepped off and picked up a flower and put it on her lapel. And she awakened. She told a, a man named brother, a man named Bud Aldis. Brother Bud was our humble, humble teacher. And he was very direct and very loving. So my mom told Brother Bud about this beautiful dream, thinking she had this beautiful dream. Brother Bud's response to her is, oh, sister, what have you done to disappoint the Lord? She said, what? She said, I put a beautiful, the beautiful flower on my lapel. He said, oh, sister. He said, you stepped off the path and retrieved that flower. He said, that represents pride. That night, and she received it humbly. That night she went home and prayed and, and repented, and she had another dream. And in the dream, she was walking on a path very familiar to her. And there were flowers on the side. And she stayed straight on that path, and there was nothing on her lapel. She went to Brother Bud Aldous that next day, and she said, Brother Bud, I had this dream. Tell me what it means. He said, sister, you're back in the pleasure of your God. I want you to hear this verse again so that you understand why I shared that experience with you. We who are pressing forward, we who are pressing toward, it says this. If in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Why? Because he loves us. Because he knows who holds the golden tickets. And he wanted my mom to hold on to her golden ticket and not lose it in the flowers. Nevertheless, says verse 16, where to we have already attained, July 27th, 1976, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us continue. Same mind, same rules, same path, Stay on that straight and narrow. Why? So that we might win Christ. Your theme today is a battle cry. Win Christ. Win Christ. Football, basketball, uh, Uno, uh, dodgeball, everything I've named to you. You win by scoring more. You win by succeeding. You win by dominating. <laughs> the definition of win is this. Be successful or the victor in a contest or a conflict. Acquire or secure a victory as a result of a contest, conflict, bet, or other competitive endeavor. To obtain or gain possession of by effort or fortune, to gain in or as if in a battle contest or work, to achieve victory, especially first place through effort or work. But to win Christ, we go the complete other direction. We have to break ourselves down. We have to humble ourselves. We don't, we don't try to attain victory for us. We try to share victory with others. It's complete opposite when it says win Christ. We win Christ by letting go of those things that we believed determined us as victors. We let go of those things that we think bring us success. 
and we turn over to the success of Jesus Christ. Your theme today is simple. Your theme today is a, is a chant, a shout, a cry. And it's this, win Christ. May the Lord bless each one of you as winners, as glorious winners for Jesus Christ. Not because of anything we do, because of everything he has done and continues to do for all of us. May the Lord bless each one of you. That each one of you claim the victory of Jesus Christ said this way, win Christ. God love each one of you.